Okay, so here is the LIFO example. Um, and this is the example from my math. Um, and again, you'll see that it's pretty much the same thing. You've got your beginning balance. This is the amount of inventory that was left over from whatever was left over from the end of last month. You've got a couple purchases and a couple sales, and it's asking you to calculate the cost of goods sold, the ending inventory, the gross profit for the month under the LIFO method, last in, first out. And again, it's only asking you for the totals, and so you're going to have to do this calculation on a separate piece of paper somewhere. So we're wanting to find out the cost of goods sold, the ending inventory, and the gross profit at the end of, at the, up, at the, end of the month under the LIFO method. And so my example here is the exact same example that we did on the last slide, right, for FIFO. But now we're going to go through and we're going to figure out our cost of goods sold. And let me fix this again. Sorry, I should have fixed this before the recording started. Didn't think about it. Um, so we're trying to, again, figure out what inventory do we have on hand at the end of the month after all these transactions are accounted for. These three sales that I have, the 80 units, the 60 units, and the 100 units, how much did, I actually, did they actually cost me under the LIFO method this time? LIFO stands for last in, first out. And what is our gross profit at the end? So these three numbers here are the ones that we're looking for in my open math. But again, we have to calculate the sales in order to come up with the, with the gross profit. And so I'm going to go through the exact same situation that we had before. I start off with my beginning inventory. And I'm going to go through this example a little bit faster because you've already done the first in, first out. So this um, should be fairly easy. Um, start off with my beginning inventory, and that's coming straight from the um, table here, right? I start off with 160 units. They cost me $24 a piece. So I'm starting off with a beginning inventory of $3,840 for the month of January. That's what I had left over December of last year. And then January 5th, I made a purchase. I purchased 70 units at $26 a piece. And so that totals, um, when I purchased those, $1,820. So at the, at the end of every transaction, you just have to figure out how much inventory you have on hand, right? I have 160 units. I still have that beginning inventory. I haven't sold any of that left. And I have now the 70 units at 26 that I just purchased. So after that purchase, my um, in, inventory on hand is this items in pink, okay? And then on January 8th, it says I sold 80 units. But this time, I'm assuming last in, first out. So when it's last in, first out, you're assuming these items here, the last ones that came into your inventory right before the sale, are the ones that you sold first. So the more, most recent items in your inventory are the ones you sell first. So since I sold 80 units, <clears throat> I assume I sold all of these, right? So I sold 70 at 26. Because I sold 80, that's only 70, so I can pretty much delete those now because now I've sold all of those. And I need 10 more, so I'm going to take 10 from my beginning inventory, right, 10 at 24. And then you have to figure out what you've got left. And again, you want to make sure you're keeping these in chronological order when you're writing them on hand because you need to know which ones came in first and which ones came in last under FIFO and LIFO. So I had 160 units and I sold 10. So I've got 150 of those left, right? So after this transaction, after this sale of these 80 units, <clears throat> I have these items in, let's do these in green, in green left. I have 150 units at $24 a piece. So that's part of my, in, of my um, beginning inventory that I still have left. <clears throat> the very next transaction is a purchase. I purchased 45 units at $27 a piece. And so I go ahead and figure out my inventory on hand. Again, make sure you're keeping these in chronological order. I'm putting my beginning inventory first. And then I'll just bring over what I just purchased. So what I have on hand after that transaction are these items in teal here. Okay. And then my next transaction is January 22nd. I purchased 25 units at $28 a piece. And so then you have to figure out what inventory you have on hand after that transaction. And again, make sure you're bringing these down in the same order. You have your beginning inventory, and you have the items that you purchased on January 15th, 45 units to $27 a piece. And then you have the items that you just purchased on January 22nd, 25 units at $28 a piece. So after this purchase, the items that I have on hand, let me do those in, let's just do them in pink. I already have pink. Let's do orange. The items I have on hand now, right, <clears throat> they're still listed in the order that they came in. Because, again, we're doing last in, first out. We need to know which ones came in first 
second, and third, so that when we're applying this last and first out, we're picking from the right group. Okay, and so then I have a sale. So it says I sold 60 units, and again, I sold them for $35. That's the sales price that I sold them to the customer. I need to figure out under the LIFO method how much these 60 units cost me when I purchased them. And so under the LIFO method, again, we're going to have to choose from the last ones that came in. So the last ones that I have here that came in right before the sale, these 25 at $28 a piece, these ones that I just purchased on the 22nd. So I'm going to put those in first because those are the last ones that came in. So really I can kind of get rid of those because now they're all gone. And I need 60, right? And I've already accounted for 25 because it says I sold 60 units. So you have to just kind of keep going until you get to all 60 units. So if I sold 25 and I need to have sold 60, I need 35 more, right? So 35 plus 25 will give me the 60 units. Well, the, the next latest ones that came in, and then the next most recent ones that came in were these ones that I purchased on the 15th, 45 units at 27. But I only need 35 of those. So to get me to the 60 units, right, because that's what I'm trying to account for is the 60 units that I sold. I only need to take 35 of these 45 at $27 a piece. Okay, because so when you add those together, you got 60 units. <clears throat> and so now what do I have left? Again, when you're looking at your inventory on hand, make sure you're keeping them in the order that they came in. So you always want to put your beginning inventory first if you have any of that left. And then your next purchase and your next purchase. Make sure you're keeping those in chronological order. It's very, very important. And so these items that were 45 units at $27 a piece, I sold 35 of them. So I've only got 10 of those left at $27 each. And these ones that I purchased 25 at 28, I now have sold all those. So those would be blank. So now what I have left after that sale, let me just do that in blue, is this. I have some of my beginning inventory left right and I've listed those first and I have some of the items that I purchased on January 15th and then the very last transaction for the month on January 31st says I sold 100 units so again I start at the bottom because when under this method LIFO method it's the last ones that came in right before the sale and so that's why it's so important to keep these in chronological order so I'm going to assume that I sold all 10 of those ones that are left at $27 a piece and I sold 100 units, so I need 90 more, right? If I sold these 10, I can go ahead and delete those, right? I need 90 more from my beginning inventory. So 90 at $24 a piece gives me 2,160. And so what do I have left? I had 150 and I sold 90. So that gives me what? 150 minus 90 gives me 60 of those left at $24 a piece. So my ending inventory after all the transactions are accounted for, let's do it in purple, is, oops, sorry, is 60 units at $24 a piece or 1,440. So my ending inventory at the end of the month is going to be $1,440, right? Because that's what I have. I don't even have to add anything together like we did with the FIFO method where I had a couple of different batches. This one, all I have left is my, some of my beginning inventory still left. So I can go ahead and fill that in. My ending inventory, $1,440. You can fill that into my math. My cost of goods sold, right? I sold three different batches. I sold some on the 8th. I sold some on the 25th. And I sold some on the 31st. And I figured out how much each one of those batches cost me when I sold those. And so now all I have to do is I have to just add these all up, right? I have the... 80 units that I sold on January 8th. I have the 60 units that I sold on January 25th. And I have the 100 units that I sold on January 31st. So I'm just adding all of my cost of goods sold together for the whole month so I can get my total cost of goods sold for the month of 6,135. And I could do the same thing. I could go down and add up all of the units that I sold. Sold 240 units. So my cost of goods sold for the month is $6,135. Remember that little double check I showed you when we were looking at FIFO? And I said you could figure out your total cost of goods available for sale, right? By adding up your beginning inventory plus all your purchases for the month. And I said that when you get this cost of goods available for sale, let me label this for you, cost of goods available for sale. 
And that's your beginning inventory plus all of your purchases for the month. And we said that this number here, these cost of goods that are available for sale, they're either sold, right? And they show up on your income statement at the end of the month or they're still sitting there, in which case they'll be on your balance sheet as inventory at the end of the month. And so what we can do to double check that all of our math here is correct, is we can now add our cost of goods sold and our ending inventory together, and it should come back to our cost of goods available for sale. So I'm just gonna do that little calculation right here. I'm gonna take my cost of goods sold for the whole month, plus my ending inventory at the end of the month, and I'm gonna add them together, and it should, equal my cost of goods available for sale, $7,575. And this is going to be true for every single method that you do. Weighted average might be off by a couple dollars simply from rounding. When we get to that, you'll see. <clears throat> but for the most part, it should always agree. Okay, $7,575. If it doesn't, then you've done something wrong here. And again, in my math, when you key these numbers in, you hit submit, it's going to tell you whether you're right or wrong. But in an exam or, or a quiz, it's not going to. And so having this little double check, being able to figure out your cost of goods available for sale by taking your beginning inventory plus your purchases and comparing that to the cost of goods sold, the total cost of goods sold for the month and the ending inventory for the month and adding those together, and they should equal. Okay, the very last number we need to calculate is our gross profit because we need to key that into my open math as well. And, but in order to do that, our gross profit is our sales minus our cost of goods sold. So we have to figure out what our sales were to our customers for the month. And so again, I've got 80 units. I sold them to my customer for $35 a piece on January 8th. And on January 25th, I sold 60 units. And again, I sold them for $35 a piece. And on um, January 31st, I sold 100 units at $35 a piece. So my total sales for the month are $8,400. And so if I come down here and I key that in, $8,400, and I take the $8,400 and subtract that from my cost of goods sold that I came up with under LIFO for those 240 units, $6,135, I get my gross profit, right? Because gross profit is net sales minus cost of goods sold. So when you're filling in that gross profit number, you first have to calculate your net sales, in this case, just sales, because we don't have any sales discounts or sales returns and allowances, okay? And you're gonna get your sales by taking your, your units that you sold times the sales price to the customer. Units that you sold times sales price to the customer for each sale and then add them all together to get your total sales for the month. Okay, so these 240 units that we sold, we, uh, we sold them to our customer for $8,400 when we figure out how much they actually cost us when we bought them under the LIFO method, they only cost us $6,135. So we have a gross profit after um, paying for the goods of $2,265. And that gross profit will now have to cover all the rest of our expenses. And then on our balance sheet, we should see an ending inventory of $1,440. And so once you've done this calculation on a separate sheet of paper, then you will go back into my math and you'll just key those three numbers in. Again, you'll see you don't have to key the sales in, but you do have to calculate the sales in order to get the gross profit. Okay, so that's the LIFO method.